As the corpses of the fallen student and mercenaries found in the demon spirit forest are brought outside, the gatekeeper summons his spirit pet and stops the students from leaving. Suddenly, he orders the capture of Yi Qian Sing for the case of murder. Professor Milker asks the gatekeeper, whom she calls Professor Zhou, what exactly is happening. Professor Zhou tells her that Yi Qian Sing killed his nephew, Zhou Wei, so he has to pay for his crime with his life. Yi Qian Sing asks Professor Zhou what evidence he has to put the blame on him. Realizing that he is blood related with Zhou Wei, Yi Qian Sing knows that they are definitely birds of the same feathers. Professor Zhou tells Yi Qian Sing that he doesn't care about the evidence and commands his spirit pet to end the life of Yi Qian Sing. However, Professor Milker jumps in with her giant missiles, not allowing him to continue his plans against her student. She tells Professor Zhou that if he has no evidence that can prove that Yi Qian Sing killed his nephew, she will not allow him to lay a finger on her student. He then questions Professor Milker's action and threatens her about going against the Zhou family. Professor Milker reiterates that Yi Qian Sing is her student and his safety is her responsibility. So if Professor Zhou cannot prove his claim, she will protect him at all costs. After hearing Professor Milker's resolve, Professor Zhou ran out of words to say and decided to stop. Professor Milker even told him that if there were no conclusive evidence, they would leave first. After that, Professor Zhou loses his mind while thinking about how his life will be over if the Zhou family blames him for Zhou Wei's death, considering he died under his jurisdiction. You're a victim! Mm. Apparently, he really has no evidence at all, and he only wants to use Yi Qi and Xing as a scapegoat for the Zhou family's grudge. However, since Professor Milker intervenes, he will have to devise a plan along with the Iron Blood mercenary to plan something against Yi Qi and Xing. Later that day, the students return to the academy. Here, Xia Xiaoyu, along with his classmates, asks Professor Milker why the academy makes a special class for the top five students. Professor Milker explains to them that it was due to their talents and the bloodline quality of their spirit pets that exceeded their expectations. That said, putting them in regular classes will be a wasted opportunity. After advising them to rest and prepare for their training the next day, Professor Milker asks Yi Qian Sing to stay for a while, which confuses him so much. Soon after, the idea of staying with Professor Milker excites him. Seeing his reaction, Professor Milker wonders what is going on in his mind and why is his saw lai vo dripping out at the same time. It turns out that Yi Qian Sing is thinking that Professor Milker will teach him character development, where he will get a milky life-changing experience. <laughs> Sensational. Feeling extremely awkward, the very humble Yi Qian Sing tells Professor Milker that he knows he is handsome and feels embarrassed if she keeps staring at him like that. He tells her that he's a man of culture and suggests that if she wants to have him, he can give her some time to sit in a coffee shop. All of a sudden, Professor Milker hits his head to wake him up to reality and stop him from fantasizing about her two massive missiles. To add insult to injury, she even tells Yi Qian Sting that he's not even big enough to fill her floodgate. Emotional damage. Professor Milker's punch is so strong that it gives Yi Qian Sing a big bump on his head. Yi Qian Sing felt really bad after receiving physical pain from her punch and emotional pain from her insult. As expected from a professor like her, the best way to mend a broken heart is by telling the person involved to stop fooling around. She then asks Yi Qian Sing if he has unlocked his awakened state already. Yi Qian Sing is not aware of what the heck she's talking about, so he asks her if the awakened state is something that can be eaten, just like his awakened stick. Hearing that suspicious statement, Professor Milker deadly glares. Meanwhile, using Harry Potter's spell, screen as projecto, Professor Milker materialized a holographic projector screen, which shocks Yi Qian Sing on a whole new level. With the use of her well-crafted PowerPoint presentation, she explained the awakened state. In the presentation, Professor Milker showed him the images of Sai Tama and Ma Jin Bu. Apparently, awakened state is the compatibility of the spirit master and the spirit pet to perform the iconic Dragon Ball Z move, the fusion dance. <laughs> if the awakened state has reached 100%, the two can merge into one being. In the case of Saitama and Majin Bu, their full awakened state forms Jubaji, the humanoid pig demon from Journey to the West. Seeing how awful the final product is, Yi Qi and Sing loses interest in the merging stuff. However, Professor Milker tells him not to look down on the awakened state, for only a few extremely talented individuals have the ability to unlock it. 
Professor Milker reminded him of the time when he fought the Ironback Wolf all by himself. That was the time when she thought Yi Chi Yang Sing had unlocked his awakened state. At that moment, Yi Chi Yang Sing cannot say anything because he knows to himself that he is only able to do that with the help of the Spirit Pet Creation Simulator. Apart from that, he was also intrigued after Professor Milker revealed that there are a few others who have the strength surpassing normal humans. Not long after, Professor Milker asks Yi Chi Yang Sing about the compatibility between him and his spirit pet. Since he has completely no idea about the compatibility she is talking about, Yi Chi Yang Sing asks where it can be seen. The conversation gave Professor Milker a headache, so he asked Yi Chi Yang Sing to hit her at that very moment. Upon hearing those words, Yi Chi Yang Sing's mirror cells run wild to the point that they command all of his blood cells to go south, causing him to have a hard D. Realizing that the dirty-minded virgin has misinterpreted her words again, Professor Milker gives her a death stare. She then clarified that she was referring to his little fist, not his little bird, so he should cut the crap. <laughs> that said, Yi Chi Yen Sing tells his teacher to keep her guard up. As he proceeds with his punch, he only uses 50% of his strength. Professor Milker single-handedly stops his attack, which shocks Yi Chi Yen Sing so much. After grabbing his hand, Professor Milker completely maneuvers his whole body. As the point of view of Yi Chi Yen Sing turns upside down, he realizes how strong Professor Milker is. After that embarrassing fall, he fixes his posture and stands on his ground. Professor Milker tells him to use his 100% strength for her to see how far the compatibility is between him and his spirit pet. Hearing that, Yi Chi Yen Sing warns her to be careful, and just like that, he attacks and delivers his flying kick against his teacher. Professor Milker plans to intercept his attack, so she prepares to deliver a flaming punch against Yi Chi Yang Sing. The impact was so strong that it exploded like a dynamite. Professor Milker deals with it like nothing happened. However, Yi Chi Yang Sing had his shoes burning from the explosion, and he felt how powerful the flaming blow was. Professor Milker praises him for his good job and plans to strike him again. The unprepared Yi Chi Yang Sing freaks out at what he is about to experience, so he decides to use shock against Professor Milker. Suddenly, Professor Milker stops moving, which Yi Chi Yang Sing has taken as a great opportunity to defeat her. However, Professor Milker manages to break free from the spell and is caught off guard by Yi Chi Yang Sing's attack. Realizing that Professor Milker breaks free from his shock ability, Yi Chi Yang Sing gets extremely confused. The next thing they know is that Yi Chi Yang Sing is grabbing Professor Milker's big balloons like a wild baboon. <laughs> Sensational. Professor Milker had enough of Yi Chi Yang Sing's unusual behavior, and she channeled her anger to a single punch on Yi Chi Yang Sing's chest that almost isekai him into a completely new world. Feeling a shattering pain all over his body, Yi Chi Yang Sing surrendered from the fight. Soon after, Professor Milker asks Yi Chi Yang Sing about the ability he recently used against her for it made her lose consciousness for a moment. Yi Chi Yen Sing explains to her that the ability he used is called Soul Shock, which is an ability of his spirit pet. After hearing that, Professor Milker figures out that Yi Chi Yen Sing's compatibility with his spirit pet is above 70%, which is very impressive because she only reaches 75% in her case. Professor Milker can't help but wonder how he reached that level, considering he just recently became a spirit master. Yi Chi Yen Sing tells her that it might be because he'd been living with 205 for several years before it became his spirit pet. Professor Milker did not buy his story and told him that everyone has their own secrets, and she doesn't want to pry either, so it's better to forget about it. After Professor Milker offers to help him with his awakened state, Yi Chi Yen Sing asks if he needs to pay extra for it. Professor Milker informed him that with his current state, he cannot use it to its maximum potential, that's why she will be teaching him for free. Yi Chi Yang Sing left happily after knowing the terms of Professor Milker. Moments later, when Yi Chi Yang Sing comes out of the academy, his homie, Su Ti La, excitedly runs toward him. It turns out that he wants to personally ask him if he received a milky character development experience from Professor Milker. As their faces draw closer, Yi Chi Yang Sing feels the urge to kiss him. Just kidding, he calls him a certified dirty minded person. Su Ti La invites him to have get to know moments with their new classmates. That said, Zhou Yu Wei and Zhou Lang introduce themselves to Yi Qi and Sing. Su Ti La invites him to eat together to learn more about each other. But Yi Qi Yang Sing refuses because he plans to find out how to register as a spirit nurturer in the city. 
After hearing that, Zhou Yuwei is completely shocked. He cannot believe that Yi Qi and Xing is also a spirit nurturer. Su Ti Lam brags to the Zhou siblings that Yi Qi and Xing has a great talent as a spirit nurturer. He even encourages them to ask him how to advance the level of their spirit pet. On the other hand, Yi Qi and Xing tells them not to listen to him because he only likes to brag. And just like that, Yi Qi and Xing left the four to have a get together. Meanwhile, Zhou Yuwei becomes suspicious of Yi Qi and Xing for being a talented spirit nurturer at a young age. It turns out that in their city, most spirit nurturers are middle-aged or elderly people. Jiangnan City Nurturers Association is the one responsible for releasing the nurturer's certificate, which is the most difficult certificate to get in their generation. Here, a few adults are coming to get certified. Yi Qi Yen Xing is the youngest person in the area who will take the examination to get officially certified. Since being a spirit nurturer requires a long period of study, most nurturers are already adults when they are ready to get certified. Apparently, the spirit nurturing profession is the highest paid in this world. That's why Yi Qi Yen Xing wants to get certified. A smiling registration staff welcomes Yi Qi Yen Xing and asks him if he would like to apply for the primary or intermediate level. At the back of her mind, she wonders if Yi Qi Yen Xing started studying at a very young age since he looks younger than her. Yi Qi Yen Xing, on the other hand, happily asks if there is an advanced or expert level test to be taken. Hearing that, the registration staff informs him that the highest level he can achieve in the city is intermediate level, and if he wants to achieve a higher level, he can register at the imperial city. That said, Yi Qi Yen Xing decided to take the intermediate level test. The registration staff, though, is not convinced that he can pass it, so she asks him again if he would like to reconsider. Yi Qi Yen Xing pays the registration fee and asks for a registration form. So, after confirming the payment, he is given the form along with his test schedule. That night, when Yi Qi Yen Xing returned to his apartment, he heard the shower again. That said, he knows that Yi Qing Han is back. At that moment, Yi Qi Yen Xing wondered if he would come out without clothes again. So he stayed there to see for himself. When the door of the bathroom opens, Yi Qi Yen Xing gets ready to witness another spectacular view. However, Yi Ching Han comes out of the bathroom wearing a thin fabric dress, showcasing her two massive plot candies. Yi Qi Yen Xing is disappointed, but he cannot deny the fact that she is still eye-catching. <laughs> After greeting her, Yi Qi Yen Xing immediately asks for his commission on the last mission they worked on together. Apparently, she doesn't remember what he is talking about. After that, she immediately turns her back to Yi Qi Yen Xing and tells him not to look at her like that, or she will dig his eyes out. At that very moment, Yi Qi Yen Xing confirmed that Yi Ching Han indeed has a split personality disorder. The next day, Yi Qi Yen Xing's examination has arrived, so he goes early to the Jiangnan City Nurturers Association building for it. Here, he met a room facilitator who had mistaken him for having attended the wrong room. But with Yi Qi Yen Xing's exam pass, he was allowed to enter. When he entered, he saw a bunch of adults getting ready for the test. As expected from them, they think he is just fooling around. Not long after, the head professor who will administer their test has arrived. Based on the reactions of his co-examiner, he can tell that the head professor is popular. After greeting them all, he introduced himself as the test administrator. The man does not waste any time and immediately proceeds with the examination, where they are to figure out how to revive a spirit pet that failed in mutating. He even added that if they can help it mutate successfully, then that would be even better. Apparently, he is referring to the monkey spirit pet that turned into a stone. Mr. Baldi asks the head professor if the task is saving a mutated spirit pet. Why is he giving them a stone statue? That said, the head professor tells them that if they cannot even tell what that thing is, why are they even taking the exam? With the help of the spirit pet creation simulator, Yi Qi Yen Xing manages to figure out what it is. This spirit pet is called Gibbon. From ape god lineage, but not activated yet, and it belongs to the rock types. It has three star growth type appraisal with F8 level. On the other hand, its advancement condition and evolution path are still unknown. Not to mention, it is already in a near death state. Realizing that it is indeed a spirit pet from the ape god lineage that failed to mutate, Yi Qi Yen Sting raises his hand and shares his knowledge about it. The head professor confirms it and reveals that they wanted to upgrade it using a rock type evil spirit core but failed due to improper handling. That said, the head professor tells them that to pass the test, they have to find a way to save the spirit pet in an hour. Wow, 
That's brilliant. Putting your negligence as someone else's responsibility. Hearing that condition to pass the exam and knowing what needed to be done. Yi Qian Singh did not waste any time and told the head professor what he needed to complete the task. The head professor is quite skeptical. So he asks Yi Qian Singh how sure he is that his solution will work. With over the roof confidence and sincerity, Yi Qian Singh tells him that he is 100% sure that it will work. He even added that if they provide him with all the needed materials, he can also make it mutate successfully. Furthermore, Yi Qian Singh tells him that he is willing to pay for the materials if they go to waste. After hearing that Yi Qian Singh can help the spirit pet to mutate, the head professor can't help but wonder about the enigmatic confidence of Yi Qian Singh. Nonetheless, the head professor decided to trust him and ask his assistant to prepare the requested materials. Soon after, Yi Qian Singh prepared the concoction and put all the needed materials in the creamy liquid. When the solution is ready, Yi Qian Singh orders to place the statue inside the huge cauldron. One of the old boomers asks Yi Qian Singh how they are going to take the exam if he kills the spirit pet, and Mr. Baldi even adds that fuel to the fire. That said, Yi Qian Singh faces the boomers and asks them if they have solutions in their minds to save the spirit pet. The old boomers continue to protest against Yi Qian Singh, but the head professor silences them all and allows Yi Qian Singh to continue. After hearing the decision of the head professor, they stopped all of their commotions and violent reactions. When the statue was put inside the boiling cauldron, the head professor asked Yi Qian Singh to explain his thoughts. As expected, Yi Qian Singh is humble enough to explain how the materials can help in reviving the spirit pet. He even explains to them how the solution will help the spirit pet to mutate successfully. The head professor finds Yi Qian Singh's explanation really amusing. However, he still cannot believe that he can make spirit pets mutate with the use of the requested materials, considering the fact that it is unheard of and the mutation occurs naturally on the spirit pets themselves. After half an hour, nothing has changed. This causes another commotion from the old boomer. However, Yi Qian Singh reiterates that they all have an hour to do their task, so they should not be impatient with this process. As expected, Mr. Baldi is as aggressive as usual. However, another old man told Mr. Baldi to be patient and wait for Yi Qian Singh's reaction when he failed the task. Yi Qian Singh prepares a small vial of solution to help the spirit pet to evolve. According to the head professor's knowledge, there has been no nurturer who succeeded in doing it. Yi Qian Singh tells the head professor under normal conditions, a small vial of solution will never be enough to activate the spirit pet's lineage. However, since it is on the verge of death, the blood essence will awaken its consciousness and will let it evolve by itself. Suddenly, the spirit pet awakens and instantly enrages. The head professor was taken aback by what he had just witnessed. He thought that it was actually a miracle to revive it and let it mutate. In an instant, the spirit pet destroyed the materials that they used to revive it. What an unruly monkey, and just like what Yi Qian Singh told them, it indeed evolved. This spirit pet is called Golden Gibbon, from Ape God Lineage, 50% activated, and it belongs to the mutated gold and battle types. It has 4 star growth type appraisal with E5 level. Indestructible Vajra and Great Divine Fist are its special skills, while its weakness is still not indicated. On the other hand, its advancement condition and evolution path are still unknown. The head professor still cannot believe what he just witnessed while Yi Qian Singh is standing proudly in front of the newly evolved mutated spirit pet. The head professor expresses how impressed he is with Yi Qian Singh and feels bad that he can only grant him an intermediate level spirit nurturer certificate. Meanwhile, Mr. Baldi is irritated by Yi Qian Singh's success. Hum, the smell of insecurity is in the air. Suddenly, Yi Qian Singh's foot is grabbed by the spirit pet which freaks him out a little, only to find out that the spirit pet is looking at him with dazzling eyes of affection. When Yi Qi Yang Sing asks the spirit pet if it wants to follow him, it hugs his leg and looks at him affectionately. The head professor starts wondering what to do in the situation. The primate type spirit pets are intellectually developed, so it is normal for them to be grateful. With the looks of it, the spirit pet wants to stay with Yi Qi Yang Sing, but the head professor can't easily decide, for they spend a lot of money on it. After hearing the head professor's words, the spirit pet went berser and started crushing down the floor of the building. Thus, he is left with no choice but to follow the desire of the spirit pet. Yi Qian Singh thanks the head professor for his kind consideration and tells him not to hesitate to reach out if he needs him. The head professor, on the other hand, 
tells him that it is an honor for Ji Yang Man City to have a young intermediate nurturer like him. Later that day, Yi Qi Yen Sing formed a contract with the Golden Gibbon, and he named him King Kong, to which the spirit pet happily agreed. Then, the spirit pet creation simulator happily facilitates their contract. As usual, after the completion of the contract, the spirit pet creation simulator asks Yi Qi Yen Sing to choose one skill from the Golden Gibbon that he wants to have as his skill. Yi Qi Yen Sing chooses the Indestructible Vajra, which is immediately integrated into his skill set. Indestructible Vajra grants his body a strong defense. That said, Yi Qi Yen Sing asked King Kong to attack him with 10% of its strength to test his new skill. When Yi Qi Yen Sing notices that he can withstand the attack effortlessly, he asks his spirit pet to increase the strength to 20, 30, and 40%. When it reaches 50%, the force causes Yi Qi Yen Sing to slide backward. That said, Yi Qi Yen Sing realizes how much potential his spirit pet has and how much power it can resist. As a form of gratitude for the skill granted to him by his spirit pet, Yi Qi Yen Sing gave him his thick brown growing stick. This item can grow big and small, and it has a surprising weight. Bro just turned King Kong to Sun Wukong. Moments later, Yi Qi Yen Sing saw everyone doing their special training at the school. Huo Huo, with the help of Shaq Xiaoyu, is tasked to evade the flying balls that attack it in mid-air, while it is blindfolded. Not long after, his attention was caught by Zhou Lang's spirit pet. This spirit pet is called Conquering Dragon Turtle, from Black Tortoise lineage, 50% activated, and it belongs to the water and earth types. It has 5 star growth type appraisal with F9 level. Withdraw and Earth Weird are its special skills, while its weakness is still not indicated. On the other hand, its advancement condition and evolution path are still unknown. Seeing him frustrated about the training, Professor Milder tells him that he is exempted, for his spirit pet is not suited for that kind of training. Then, she calls out Yi Qi Yen Sing for being so late. Yi Qi Yen Sing tells her that he took the spirit nurturer exam that morning. After hearing that, Su Ti La asks him if he passed it, which he confirms and shocks Professor Milker so much. Su Ti La is so happy after knowing that Yi Qi Yen Sing is already an intermediate nurturer. Xiao Xiao Yu and Professor Milker also congratulated and praised him for his achievement. Meanwhile, the Zhou siblings can't help but be amazed by Yi Qi Yen Sing. Nonetheless, Professor Milker pulls out Yi Qi Yen Sing for his personal training with her in the sparring room. She then asks him to keep their training a secret as she doesn't want the school to know that she is giving him a favored treatment, to which he agrees. That afternoon, Professor Milker taught him a fisting style. Sorry, I meant the one-inch punch, a martial art used before the new era. She tells him that it is way more powerful than he thinks it is, for it can give her a life-changing experience known as climax. Sorry, I meant a punch that was just incredibly strong. After realizing the power of Professor Milker's technique, Yi Qi Yen Sing felt incredibly amazed and wondered why nobody was using it in their era. Professor Milker explained to him that it was due to the fact that spirit masters focused more on strengthening their spirit pets than themselves. And just like that, Professor Milker showed him how to master that technique. Later that evening, after their sessions with Professor Milker, the trio went home together. Su Ti La is trying to draw the tea about Yi Qi Yen Sing and Professor Milker, but Yi Qi Yen Sing is a good player of the pretending game. To stop Su Ti La from interrogating him, Yi Qi Yen Sing tells Su Ti La that he plans to open a nurturing office. As expected, Su Ti La is willing to support him 100% and also willing to settle all of his expenses in exchange for becoming a stakeholder. Well, business is business. Yi Qi Yen Sing felt relieved after hearing Su Ti La's offer, and he decided to give him 70% profit. But Su Ti La is not greedy, and he wants 50 50 splits of profit. Suddenly, Yi Qi Yen Sing and his friends heard people rushing over to their location. To their surprise, they are the wealthy Jewish siblings who are also willing to help with the miscellaneous and manpower in exchange for learning new skills. Although feeling overwhelmed, Yi Qi Yen Sing happily accepts their offer. With Su Ti La's influence and wealth, he manages to find the perfect place for their spirit nurturing business, which extremely amazes Yi Qi Yen Sing. Su Ti La then told him to name their business. Yi Qi Yen Sing wanted to name God Creation Studio. Su Ti La finds the name a little arrogant, but definitely approves of it. As expected from our very humble Yi Qi Yen Sing, he told Su Ti La that arrogant names suit qualified people like him. He even tells himself that even if a chicken comes to him at the very moment, he has the ability to turn it into a phoenix. Damn! 
after deciding to name it God Creation Studio. Yi Chi Yen Sing takes his first step into his own business establishment. Meanwhile, Xiao Xiao Yu asks if he wants to hire some staff because they cannot manage the office all the time since they have to attend school. Yi Chi Yen Sing, however, disagrees with her because he is planning to take the top quality goods road. So, they will only receive guests at a specific time, and there will be a limit every day. When Su Ti Lao worries about his investment, Yi Chi Yen Sing lectures him with some economic Xi of supply and demand. As expected, Su Ti La trusted his homie so much that he decided to go along with his decision. The next day, several balloons are seen in the air as part of the grand opening of the God Creation Studio. Just like any newly opened business, people are intrigued, but they are hesitant to go first. Su Ti La wonders why no one is entering their establishment. However, Yi Chi Yen Sing explains to him that since their business is new, not many people will trust their brand yet. Yi Chi Yen Sing is very positive that once they build their reputation, everything will go smoothly. Xia Xiaoyu, on the other hand, tells them confidently not to be so anxious, for they will have new customers soon. That said, Su Ti La asked her how she would know about it. All of a sudden, Zhou Yu Wei welcomes the first person who enters their business establishment. It was a young, arrogant lad who seemed to be very confident about himself. He pointed out how arrogant the name of the establishment is without pointing out how arrogant he is himself. Yi Chi Yen Sing tells him that whether the name is arrogant or not is none of his business. It did not take too long for Yi Chi Yen Sing to realize that he had come there to pick a fight and not to avail their services. The young lad then figures out that the one he is talking to is the boss of the studio. Before he can cause any further trouble, Xia Xiao Yu calls his attention. It turns out that the young lad is her younger brother, Xia Liu Sing, and she invites him to come over to attract customers. Xia Liu Sing then lashes out at her sister for wanting him to promote a small store like theirs. Xia Xiao Yu then tells him just to do what he says and stop all the nonsense. Su Ti La and Yi Qi Yen Sing were shocked after realizing the relationship between the two. Xia Liu Sing asks his sister what the heck she likes about a poor boy and even reminds her that their father would never allow them to be together. Pissed off by his shitty attitude, Xia Xiao Yu punches his head and stops his shitty talking. She then tells her brother to get lost, but Xia Liu Xing doesn't want to go. He talks to Yi Qi Yen Xing about his knowledge of nurturing a spirit pet. Yi Qi Yen Xing tells him that he knows a little about it. That said, Xia Liu Xing continues interrogating and intimidating Yi Qi Yen Xing, and that's too much rhyming. Xia Liu Xing tells him that if he messes up, he should not dare to ask his sister to fix it. Su Ti La butts in and tells him that Yi Qi Yen Xing is already an intermediate level nurturer. Xia Li Xing laughs and tells him that there is no way he is telling the truth. However, his eyes widen when Su Ti La showed him Yi Qi Yen Xing's authenticated intermediate level nurturer certification. Xia Li Xing ran out of words after Su Ti La slapped him with valid evidence. Despite the evidence they present him, his pride won't let him accept the truth, so he still insists that the certificate is fake. Xia Xiao Yu had enough of his attitude problem, so she told him that he was not welcome, and he could go. Xiao Liu Xing refuses to believe, so he summons his spirit pet to test Yi Qi Yen Xing's capabilities. While everyone anticipates that his spirit pet is a huge beast, they are all surprised to see that it is just a little cub. This spirit pet is called Ice Crystal Tiger Cub, and it belongs to the mutated frost types. It has 3-star growth type appraisal with F7 level, Tiger Roar and Freezing Strike are its special skills, while its weaknesses are Divine Fire and Lightning types. On the other hand, its advancement condition is already indicated, while its evolution path is still unknown. Su Ti La laughs after seeing his small spirit pet, which Xia Liu Xing did not like. With confidence, Yi Qi Yen Xing tells him that he can help him not only to advance the level, but also to evolve his spirit. Xia Liu Xing asks him how sure he is to successfully do what he said, to which Yi Qi Yen Sing responds 100%. Xia Liu Xing entrusted his spirit pet, whom he calls Xiao Jing Jing, to the hands of Yi Qi Yen Xing. He even promises to apologize and to take back his words if Yi Qi Yen Xing proves him wrong. Meanwhile, Su Ti La cannot hold back his laugh after hearing the name of the spirit pet. Yi Qi Yen Xing accepted the deal and he asked the Zhou siblings to prepare the needed materials. After 30 minutes of preparing the materials, Yi Qi Yen Sing put the solution in a bowl and gave it to Xiao Jing Jing. 
Xia Liuxing wonders why it smells like shit. What makes him even more surprised is that his spirit pet drinks a lot of it, despite the unbearable smell. All of a sudden, Xiao Jing Jing instantly freezes, which bothers Xia Liu Xing. Yi Qi Yen Xing assures him that what is happening is normal while he and Zhou Lang bring blocks of ice. They made an igloo-like structure around the frozen spirit pet. As the ice kept melting, a sudden burst of cold breeze was felt inside the building. The huge ice formation shatters right before their eyes. Behold the evolved form of Xiao Jing Jing in its magnificent appearance. This spirit pet is called Ice Crystal Sabertooth Tiger, and it belongs to the mutated frost types. It has three star growth type appraisal with E2 level. Tiger Roar, Freezing Strike, Ice Crystal Barrier, and Fury Bite are its special skills, while its weaknesses are Divine Fire and Lightning types. On the other hand, its advancement condition is already indicated, while its evolution path is still unknown. Xia Liu Xing cannot contain his happiness after his spirit pet evolved into a cooler and stronger version. The Zhou siblings, on the other hand, cannot believe what they have just witnessed. After that, Su Ti La gets back to Xia Liu Xing, who suddenly clings to Yi Qi En Xing's leg. His personality turns a complete 360, for he now shows so much affection towards his so-called brother-in-law. Su Ti La calls out his bad behavior, but Xia Liu Xing tells him that Yi Qi En Xing is his brother-in-law, so he should know his place in his life. Su Ti La tells him that what he and Yi Qi En Xing have is true love, so he should stop being delusional. Xia Liu Xing reiterates that what he is claiming is no longer valid, for he and Yi Qi En Xing are the ones sharing true love. Yi Qi En Xing lets the two argue all they want but the way they involve him in their conversation cringes him so much. Xia Liu Xing asks for another favor from Yi Qi En Xing. It turns out that his father's spirit pet has been in a bad condition for quite some time, and no one can figure out how to help it. He then tells him that since he is a great nurturer, he should also know how to treat sick spirit pets. With an evil smile, he tells Yi Qi En Xing that the spirit pet belongs to his future father-in-law. Thus, refusing to do it is out of his choice. Xia Xiaoyu asks his little brother why no one informs her about it. Xia Liu Xing tells his sister that since he recently entered a special class, his father did not want her to worry much about it. He then grins at Yi Qi and Xing, and tells him that if he successfully cures his father's spirit pet, he assures him not to get in his way. However, if he fails, he has to stay away from his sister. Elsewhere, five people surround the sick spirit pet. This is the spirit pet of President Xia. Unfortunately, None of the invited nurturers were able to figure out the problem. Not long after, Xia Xiaoyu arrives with her friends. She immediately asks her father what happened to Lang Shu. This spirit pet is called Howling Moon Silver Wolf, and it belongs to the lightning and frost types. It has four-star growth type appraisal with D5 level. Frost of the Moon Extreme Cold Domain and Wolf's Clan Royal Seal are its special skills, while its weaknesses are divine fire types. On the other hand, its advancement condition and evolution path are still unknown. With the help of the Spirit Pet Creation Simulator, Yi Qi En Sing instantly figures out the problem with the Spirit Pet, which is poisoning caused by a chemical in chocolate. Xia Liu Sing happily introduces Yi Qi En Sing to his father. Apparently, he is aware of him since Xia Xiao Yu cannot stop talking about him all the time. Just like his son, President Xia immediately doubts Yi Qi En Sing's capabilities. President Xia even told him that he had already invited Professor Dong Feng to check the status of his spirit pet. Upon hearing that, Yi Qi En Sing respectfully told President Xia that even the old professor could not do anything about his spirit pet's condition. The spirit nurturers in the room violently react to what Yi Qi En Sing has told. They insist that he is just a youngster and he has no right to give comments about the respected Professor Dong Feng. On the other hand, Yi Qi En Sing assures President Xia that he can cure his spirit pet. Again, just like his son, he is too stubborn to believe Yi Qi En Sing's skills. He even tells his son that all of the intermediate spirit nurturers in their city stand before them. So, there is no way for him to believe that Yi Qi En Sing is legit. Hearing enough insults, Yi Qi En Sing tells Xia Liu Sing that he cannot convince his father to believe him, so he should take his leave. Suddenly, Professor Xia's secretary arrives and tells them that Professor Dong Fang has arrived. Everyone warmly welcomes Professor Dong Fang. However, Professor Dong Fang notices and approaches Yi Qi and Xing. After seeing that, 
President Xia wonders why the professor knows Yi Qian Sing. Professor Dongfang asks Yi Qian Sing if he cannot also cure the spirit pet. Yi Qian Sing tells him that he can, but President Xia won't let him do so. Suddenly, President Xia joins the conversation and learns that Yi Qian Sing is indeed an intermediate spirit nurturer. As expected, all of the other spirit nurturers in that room were shocked after hearing it directly from Professor Dong Fan. President Xia was dumbfounded after hearing the truth. What shocks him further is the fact that Professor Dong Fang reveals that his level is far higher than what Jiangmen City can award to a spirit nurturer. Xia Xiaoyu apologizes for her father's poor judgment and asks Yi Qian Xing to stay and cure her father's spirit pet. Even Professor Dong Fang agrees with Xia Xiaoyu's request. All of a sudden, President Xia turns a complete 360 and becomes so kind toward Yi Qian Xing. Well, like father, like son. Meanwhile, the condition of the spirit pet is worsening, but Professor Dong Fang manages to diagnose that his spirit pet is poisoned. President Xia begs for him to save his spirit pet, but unfortunately, Professor Dong Fang cannot figure out what toxin is invading the body of the Howling Moon Silver Wolf. President Xia asks him what to do, so Professor Dong Fang asks Yi Qian Xing's thoughts. With confidence, Yi Qian Xing reveals that he already knows a method to cure the spirit pet. He starts explaining some chemistry she to them and reveals that it is caused by a chemical called theobromine that is usually found on chocolates. Xia Xiaoyu asks him if the spirit pet became sick because it ate chocolate. Yi Qian Xing told her that the very reason why the spirit pet fell sick was definitely because it was given a lot of theobromine. He even added that if not for its strength, it would not have persisted up to that point. Yi Qian Xing's point is clear, so President Xiao understood what he was trying to point out. So when he asks him if someone poisoned his spirit pet, Yi Qian Xing confirms it. Despite the alarming fact that they learned, Professor Dong Fang suggests curing the Howling Moon Silver Wolf first. Yi Qian Sing tells them that they need to lavage the stomach and remove the source of the poison and its residue by using another poison to fight the existing poison. President Xia asks Yi Qian Sing how sure he is, to which Yi Qian Sing replies 100%. Did I just get deja vu? After seeing Yi Qian Sing's resolve, President Xia entrusted everything in his hands. After 30 minutes of preparing the solution, Yi Qian Sing gave it to the spirit pet. After drinking it all, his body reacted wildly, and the Howling Moon Silver Wolf vomited blood. Soon after, the spirit pet tells its master that it is feeling a lot better. President Xia thanked Yi Qian Xing, and everyone felt relieved. He even apologizes to him for how he acted earlier, but Yi Qian Xing tells him not to feel bad because he is Xia Xiaoyu's father, and helping him is what he should do. All of a sudden, President Xia happily claims Yi Qian Sing as part of his family, which makes Xia Xiaoyu blush. After that, President Xia invited everyone to join them for lunch. Moments later, Yi Qian Sing thanked President Xia for his hospitality. But on top of everything, he reminded him to keep the recovery of his spirit pet a secret until he catches the culprit. When they arrive, Su Ti La asks Yi Qian Sing if President Xia did not give him a hard time. As expected, Xia Liuxing bursts in and tells Su Tila that his father would not do such a thing to his brother-in-law. Xia Xiaoyu instantly pulls his ears to stop him from spitting nonsense. The next day in the mercenary city, Yi Qian Xing walks around with numerous adventurers. Apparently, someone is tailing him, and Yi Qin Xing immediately feels it. Meanwhile, he proceeds to their carefree mercenaries guild, where Yi Xiaoya is waiting for him. Yi Qian Sing asks him if Yi Qing Han is around because he wants to get his commission in their last mission. Yi Xiao Yao points out the fact it has been a long time since he last saw him. Caught unprepared to say any excuse, Yi Qian Sing can only give him an awkward smile. All of a sudden, intruders enter their guild hall, and they are no other than the Iron Blood mercenaries. The leader asks him if he is Yi Qian Sing, which he immediately confirms. The leader accuses him of killing his brother's death. With an intimidating aura, Yi Qian Sing denies all of his accusations. After hearing that, the leader orders to catch him alive. As the Iron Blood mercenaries try to catch Yi Qian Sing, Yi Xiao Yao is pissed off by their audacity to invade his territory and disrespect elders like him. The leader calls him old garbage and tells him that he cannot do anything to help Yi Qian Sing. After that, Yi Xiao Yao decided to teach them a lesson that they won't forget. Meanwhile, 
the leader summons his spirit pet to intimidate the two. This spirit pet is called Iron Feather Eagle King, and it belongs to the flying types. It has two-star appraisal with E8 level. Iron Wing Slice is its special skill, while its weaknesses are lightning types. On the other hand, its advancement condition and evolution path are still unknown. When the leader threatens to end the life of Yi Xiao Yao, the old man summons his spirit pet. This spirit pet is called Thunder Lion King, and it belongs to the lightning types. It has four-star appraisal with D8 level. Thunderclap, Lightning Break, Endless Thunder Punishment, and Lightning Incarnation are its special skills, while its weaknesses are rock types. On the other hand, its advancement condition and evolution path are still unknown. Just by the mere presence of the spirit pet, the Iron Blood mercenaries felt intimidated. Yi Qian Xing, on the other hand, did not see it coming. He did not expect the old man to have such a powerful spirit pet. He did not give it any commands but rather let his spirit pet do as it likes. Using the Endless Thunder Punishment, the Thunder Lion King easily defeated the Iron Feather Eagle King. The leader cannot believe what he just witnessed. Yi Xiao Yao gave him a cold stare and told the enemies to get lost. All of a sudden, the leader's personality turns a complete 360. I'm so tired of these people getting complete change of heart. Can the author think off something else? He suddenly apologizes to the old man. However, before leaving, he threatens Yi Qi Yen Sing that he will make his life a living hell. The Iron Blood mercenaries quickly leave. Then, Yi Qi Yen Sing praises Yi Xiao Yao's true power. However, his true colors quickly show up and he asks Yi Qi Yen Sing to pay him for saving him. Yi Qi Yen Sing tells him that he has no money to pay him, but Yi Xiao Yao plan another way of compensation. Apparently, he wants to ask Yi Qi Yen Sing to do him a favor. When Yi Qi Yen Sing asks him what the favor is, Yi Xiao Yao revealed that it's about joining the annual mercenary group competition in the mercenary city. Yi Qi Yen Sing wonders why he wants him to join when he himself is strong enough to participate. Yi Xiao Yao tells him that he is already old for such stuff, seeing it as a good experience. Yi Qi Yen Sing agrees to do it. However, Yi Xiao Yao tells him to form a five man team in order to join the competition, which shocks Yi Qi Yen Sing. Then he puts pressure on Yi Qi Yen Sing because he already agreed to do it. Yi Qi Yen Sing told him that he could find a way to complete the five man team, however, he could not be assured of winning first place. Hearing that, the old Jeezer encourages him to secure the victory. Suddenly, Yi Qi Yen Sing brings up the prize money because he wants half of it if they win. The old man gets mad and asks Yi Qi Yen Sing if he wants to rob him. Gone are the days when he can scam the innocent young lad. Yi Qi Yen Sing tells him that he is the one who will look for people and participate in the competition. So giving him a small portion of the prize would be very unfair. The old Jeezer tries to put him in a childish money trap but fails. Yi Qi Yen Sing reiterates that he wants half of it. Help me spam rip the money heist because the old man did not succeed the same way. The old Jeezer doesn't like the idea, but he cannot do anything but accept Yi Qi Yen Sing's terms and conditions. When everything is settled, Yi Xiao Yao reveals that the competition will take place the very next day, which freaks out Yi Qi Yen Sing so much. Just like the old Jeezer, Yi Qi Yen Sing cannot do anything but do all he can to participate and win. Yi Qi Yen Sing left with too many regrets about visiting their mercenary guild. The very next day, many people from all over the city gather in the Grand Arena, where they will witness the annual mercenary group competition. Yi Qi Yen Sing and his team are waiting for the opening of the tournament. Su Ti La informs them that the first elimination round of the competition will be an item collection competition at the Demon Spirit Forest, and the first one to complete it will qualify to be part of the next round. He also informs them that there are a lot of opportunities to grow in that place. Xia Liu Xing tells him that since they are the ones who will join the competition, he should not tag along with them. This annoys Su Ti La, but Yi Qi Yang Xing tells him to go easy on him. Moments later, the team enters the Demon Spirit Forest to collect the items they need to qualify for the next round. Here, an evil spirit is guarding the item they need to collect. This evil spirit is called Eruption Gorilla, and it belongs to the fire types. It has two-star appraisal with E1 level. Its special skill is unknown, while its weaknesses are water or divine fire types. On the other hand, its advancement condition and evolution path are still unknown. According to the Spirit Pet Creation Simulator, the first item they need to get is the Fire Spirit Fruit, which contains huge fire-type energy. That said, 
Yi Qian Singh finds it as a great opportunity for Xia Xiaoyu to progress. With the use of Hu Hu's sky burning plumes and 205's devour, the evil spirit was sent to the afterlife immediately. After that, Yi Qian Singh asks his void kun to bring him the juicer. Literally, Yi Qian Singh turns the mouth of his spirit pet into the pocket of Doraemon. He turns one of the fruits into juice and gives it to Hu Hu. After drinking it, Hu Hu's level became E6, and Siak Xiaoyu was very happy about it. Meanwhile, Yi Qian Singh has thought of doing the same thing for his teammates so they will all get stronger. While continuing the search for the other items, Yi Qian Singh heard a squeaking sound, so he told them all to keep quiet. It turns out that it is a small evil spirit. This evil spirit is called Money Hamster, and it belongs to the Earth types. It has two star appraisal with F5 level. Keen sense of smell and good at finding treasures are its special skills, while wood and rock types are its weaknesses. On the other hand, its advancement condition and evolution path are still unknown. Su Ti La asks Yi Qian Sing why he is taking an interest in the little hamster. Yi Qian Sing reveals that the evil spirit pet is very good at finding items, which can help them do their task faster. That said, he asks Su Ti La and Xia Liu Sing to surround it. With Yi Qian Sing's signal, the three jump over the little hamster, but they only end up headbutting each other. After realizing their failed attempt, they see the money hamster looking down at them. Triggered, Su Ti La and Yi Qi Yen Sing summon their spirit pets. Yi Qi Yen Sing orders 205 to use shock against it, while Su Ti La commands Da Bai to use frost ground. The money hamster loses consciousness, and its body is frozen to the ground. When it regained its consciousness, Yi Qian Sing told it to help them find the items, or it would be devoured by 205. Afraid of dying soon, the money hamster reluctantly agrees. Moments later, as they continue their search, the money hamster leads them to the next item. This is the Tempest Fruit, and it has a double attribute of both wind and lightning type energy. Yi Qian Sing tells Zhou Yu Wei that the item is great for Xiao Yu, which excites her so much because it is the first time Yi Qian Sing has given her his attention. When she decides to collect the item, Yi Qian Sing stops him because he knows that an evil spirit is guarding it. Not long after, the evil spirit appears before them, they are all surprised because it is a strong one. This evil spirit is called Purple Moon Wolf King, and it belongs to the Lightning and Frost types. It has 3 star appraisal with E1 level. Its special skill is unknown, while Divine Fire types are its weaknesses. On the other hand, its advancement condition and evolution path are still unknown. Xiaoxiao Xiaoyu wants to step in and impress Yi Qian Sing, but he tells her that she doesn't have to show off because she is the only one whom he wants to develop plot with. This made her blush and she climaxed. Yi Qian Sing explains that fighting it would be a great experience for others, too. Xia Liu Xing did not waste any time and immediately jumped in to fight with Xiao Jing Jing, delivering its powerful freezing strike. However, it was instantly shattered by the lightning wave of the Purple Moon Wolf King. Then, the evil spirit looks ferociously at Xia Liu Xing, which scares him so much. Zhou Yu Wei joins the fight and asks Xiao Yu to use the Tempest Step against it. Xiao Yu leaps in different directions in midair and delivers a kick to the head of the evil spirit. However, the Purple Moon Wolf King has an ice armor that blocks any attack that it receives. Nonetheless, Zhou Yu Wei asks her spirit pet to continue attacking the enemy's armor. Xiao Yu's violent jab breaks the ice armor, which surprises Yi Qi and Sing because he did not expect the cute, cuddly bunny spirit pet to possess such enormous strength. And just like that, Xiao Yu successfully blows off the ice armor and the hoodie of the big bad wolf. The evil spirit gets mad and relentlessly attacks Xiao Yu. Seeing that, Zhou Lang commands Xiao Bao to use its Earth Ward skill, which gives Xiao Yu a protective barrier, avoiding the attack of the fatal blow from the evil spirit. This made Yi Qian Sing realize why Zhou Yu Wei was so fearless in battle. It was all because she had a formidable, solid guard protecting her spirit pet. Yi Qian Sing realizes that no matter how strong their opponent is with proper teamwork, they can defeat it. Not to mention, they also have Su Ti La to support them. Da Bai uses Freezing Osmethus, which makes the evil spirit lose balance. Xiao Yu takes the opportunity to deliver its violent jab to knock it down. While Xiao Jing Jing uses its Fury Bite to kill it. Moments later, Xia Liu Xing gave the inner pill of the evil spirit to Yi Qian Xing. Yi Qian Xing is mesmerized by the purple moon crystal, 
but my eyes are on Zhou Yu Wei's twin enormous planets. Yi Qi Yang Sing tells Xiao Yu that there is no assurance that it will evolve, but if lucky enough, it will become even stronger with the use of his portable juicer from Amazon. Yi Qi Yang Sing made a juice for Xiao Yu. After drinking it, Xiao Yu was engulfed by three elements ice, wind, wind, and lightning. And just like that, it evolved into a new spirit pet. Nice. This spirit pet is called Rampage Snow Rabbit from Jade Hair Lineage, but not activated yet. And it belongs to the wind, lightning, and mutated frost types. It has four and one half star appraisal with E4 level. Storm Control, Tempest Step, Violent Jab, and Thunder and Snowstorm Thunder are its special skill. While its weakness is not indicated yet, on the other hand, its advancement condition and evolution path are still unknown. Zhou Yu Wei got carried away by too much joy, so she decided to give Yi Qi Yen sing a joy ride by pressing her jiggly balloons that made this wild baboon blush like a virgin on the first day of his honeymoon. Sorry, I was just testing my rhyming skills. Seeing Xia Xiao Yu get pissed off, Zhou Yu Wei awkwardly apologizes to her. Then, the search for the remaining item continues. Xiao Jing Jing and Xiao Ba are both given an item to level up. The same is true with King Kong and Void Kun. Yi Qi Yen Sing praises the hard work of Money Hamster because not only did they manage to complete the items to qualify for the championship round, but they also got stronger to fight their enemies. While looking for the shortest route to exit the demon spirit forest, they pass through a yin yang spring. Yi Qi Yen Sing told Su Ti La that the item in the middle of the spring could level up Da Bie. Since all of them are ready to join the championship round, Yi Qian Sing decided to get it to thank Su Ti La for secretly accompanying them in their first task. Xia Xiao Yu offers a helping hand to Yi Qian Sing in order to get the burning frost flower. Hu Hu harvested the flower successfully. However, while going back, the guardian evil spirit gets in its way. Before getting devoured, Yi Qian Sing uses his spatial shift to save Hu Hu. Luckily, his attempt is successful managing to save both Hu Hu and the Burning Frost Flower. This evil spirit is called Two-Headed Ice and Fire Snake, and it belongs to the Frost and Fire types. It has three-star appraisal with D2 level. Its special skill is unknown, while its weaknesses are Divine Water or Divine Fire types. On the other hand, its advancement condition and evolution path are still unknown. Knowing that her spirit pet has a great advantage, Xia Xiaoyu asks Yi Qi Yen Xing if Hu Hu can still fight. Yi Qi Yen Xing tells her that since Hu Hu gets injured, it cannot handle the evil spirit alone. That being said, Yi Qi Yen Xing decided to fight it instead, and he asked his friends to assist him as much as possible. First, Yi Qi Yen Xing looks for the perfect spot to deliver his attacks. Then, he commands Hu Hu to launch its burning plumes from a certain distance. However, the evil spirit is strong enough to intercept the attack. After that, Yi Qi Yen Xing commands King Kong to smash it to death, so immediately unleashes its maximum power to fight the evil spirit. Using its huge stick, King Kong manages to penetrate its defenses, resulting into a huge explosion that ends up creating a thick smoke. Su Ti La wonders if they manage to defeat it, but to their surprise, King Kong gets constricted by the evil spirit. Seeing his spirit pet is on the verge of life and death, Yi Qi Yen Xing remembers that he is the main character. So he decides to stop the cap and be the greatest Giga Chad the world has ever seen. <laughs> Sensational. That said, Yi Qi Yen Sing commands 205 to the fatal combo shock and nether fire strike. And just like that, the evil spirit was erased to the very surface of the earth. Moments later, the team returned to the Grand Arena. Within the given short period of time, only two teams managed to complete the task, which means it's time for the championship round. Su Ti La informs Yi Qi Yen Sing that he cannot be seen as part of his team due to his status as the young master of their city. Apparently, Yi Qi Yen Sing already anticipated it and asked Xia Liu Xing to tag along instead. Xia Liu Xing tells Su Ti La that he and Yi Qi Yen Sing will go together in sickness and in health till death do them part. On the other hand, Su Ti La tells him that he can daydream all he wants because at the end of the day, Yi Qi Yen Xing will always come back to him. What do you mean by that? Later on, the championship round between the Carefree Mercenaries and the Hungry Wolf Mercenaries was announced. Two participants from the audience are alarmed to see that they are up against the most notorious mercenary group. 
Carefree Mercenaries is a team consisting of the Joe siblings, the Xia siblings, and Yi Qian Sing himself. Meanwhile, other participants wonder who the Carefree Mercenaries are because they are not familiar with them. Hearing all the belittling toward them, Yi Qian Sing motivates his teammates to crush their enemies so that they will see their true power. The leader of the enemy team starts intimidating them with his threats. On the other hand, Yi Qian Sing's team summons their spirit pets. The leader orders the pack of ironback wolves to devour their enemies, while Yi Qian Sing orders 205 to teach their enemies a good lesson. 205 fearlessly attacks the enemy with the use of its signature shock skill against the two ironback wolves in the front line. Then, 205 unleashes a shadow ripping claw strike. Elsewhere, Xiao Jing Jing jumps over the other ironback wolf. Using its strong fury bite attack, the iron plate on its back gets crushed, instantly defeating its enemy. With only two wolves remaining to take down, 205 and Xiao Jing Jing deliver their finishing blow and finish the match in just 10 seconds. The enemy team cannot believe what they have just witnessed, and they all tremble in fear. Even the other participants from the audience are struck in awe upon witnessing their strength. Yi Chi Yen Sing asks the game announcer why he is not announcing the winner yet and asks if they have to kill the spirit masters, too, which gives the enemy team a chill down their spine. The announcer reiterates that killing the spirit master is not allowed. Yi Chi Yen Sing then asks him again what the heck is waiting for before he announces who the winner is, and just like that, the announcer declared the Carefree Mercenaries team as the champion of the tournament. Su Ti La congratulated them. As usual, Xia Liu Xing is there to remind him that he is not part of their victory because he is just a spectator. After winning the competition, they went back to their usual routine. Xiao Yu Wei calls out everyone's attention to tell them that customers are coming. It did not take too long for Xia Liu Xing to recognize his father's car. Apparently, President Xia brought his rich friends to take Yi Qi Yen Xing's consultation with their spirit pets. As expected, his friends think he is just fooling around but wonder why his son and daughter are with Yi Qi Yen Xing, too. When President Xia tells them not to judge a person by their appearance, one of his friends tries Yi Qi Yen Xing's skills. He summons his spirit pet, which happens to be a giant grizzly warrior bear. This spirit pet is called Rock Kunzel War Bear, and it belongs to the Earth and Battle types. It has 3-star growth type appraisal with E3 level. Mud throwing, rock throwing, and hab budding are its special skills, while its weaknesses are water types. On the other hand, its advancement condition and evolution path are still unknown. The man asks Yi Qi Yen Sing what he can see with his spirit pet status. As usual, Yi Qi Yen Sing easily answers everything with the help of the spirit pet creation simulator. The man is shocked when Yi Qi Yen Sing tells him about the recent behavior of his spirit pet. Amazed by Yi Qi Yen Sing's skills, the man asks him if he knows a way to help his spirit pet. Yi Qi Yen Sing assures him that his spirit pet is physically healthy. Then, he reveals to him that the problem is actually its heart. Hearing that, the man asks him what he means by that. Apparently, the spirit pet falls out of love and is currently experiencing great sadness, which makes the man wonder how it possibly happened. Yi Qi Yen Sing explains that just like humans, spirit pet has emotions too. Suddenly, the man blushed when he remembered his friend who brought a female bear's spirit pet to his house. The man reveals that the bears had a great time together and realizes that his spirit pet became like that after they parted ways. President Xia tells his friend to call her and bring her spirit pet to solve the problem. After 30 minutes, the woman arrived along with her spirit pet. She enters the studio with her huge cannonballs. Sorry, I meant her huge spirit pet. The bears immediately blush after seeing each other again. And with the looks in their eyes, they are ready to repopulate their bear community. As the two bear's spirit pets share their sweet gestures, their owners are completely shocked. The man explains to her that his Rong Rong has taken a special liking to her. Hong Hong and her separation makes it feel so sad. The man asks her if she is willing to sell her spirit pet to him, but the woman refuses. Instead, she considers visiting Hong Hong as long as he doesn't mind about it. The man wildly tells her that he doesn't mind even if she stays in his place. Bro. We're talking about your spirit pets, not you. The woman tells him that she will live in his house from then on. Wow, that's real quick. Apparently, their spirit pets are not the only ones in love. It turns out that they have been in love with each other for a long time, but they decided to pursue their career first. The design is very Asian culture. With the help of the spirit pet creation simulator, Yi Qi Yen Sing also manages to help the other friends of President Xia. The next day, Su Ti La rushes toward him to tell him their problem. 
Apparently, their suppliers refuse to give them their needed items because the Iron Blood mercenaries threaten to hurt them if they keep selling items to them. Upon hearing that, Yi Qi Yen Sing knows that their leader is the reason behind it. Su Ti La also informs Yi Qi Yen Sing that more than half of the nurturing studios in the city belong to them, so their presence have taken away a huge amount of their customers. Nevertheless, he tells Yi Qi Yen Sing that he will ask his daddy Dearest to help them. But Yi Qi Yen Sing wants another way of dealing with them. Yi Qi Yen Sing is at the point of his life where he won't let anybody ruin his growing success. So he tells Su Ti La that he will fight them with wit. When the night arrived, the six went straight to the warehouse of the Iron Blood mercenaries. Su Ti La asks Yi Qi Yen Sing what his plan is. Yi Qi Yen Sing brings out some weeds, and he asks Xia Xiao Yu to use Hu Hu to burn them. He let the wind take the smoke to the enemies. After sniffing the smoke from the burning weed, the spirit pets went too high, then they lost their senses and attacked their owners. The six watch how the spirit pets rebel against their spirit masters. When they are free to infiltrate the warehouse, they proceed to their next plan. The Iron Blood Mercenary Warehouse is filled with treasure chests. Yi Qi Yen Xing is overwhelmed by the amount of good stuff inside the warehouse, so he decides to take them all. With the help of his Void Kun, Yi Qi Yen Xing takes everything with its space magic. After stealing everything, Yi Qi Yen Xing and his friends leave. Meanwhile, the Iron Blood Mercenaries are shocked to see that everything has been stolen. After quite some time, the news in the town spread and Yi Qi Yen Xing's studio gained popularity. An endless stream of customers keeps coming into their studio despite their limited operating hours. In just a few months, Yi Qi Yen Sing became one of the wealthiest men in their city. Now, he is no longer the unwanted orphan boy, and he can finally become who he wants to be.